What's going on, everybody? This is Steve from Bloom Audio. Today, we're going to talk about the Empire Ears Triton. Empire Ears has been pretty quiet for the past couple years, focusing on IEMs like their collaborations with Astle and Kern, Odyssey and the Novus, and of course, their current flagship, Raven. So Triton is the biggest non-collaboration, non-flagship IEM that they've released in quite a while. Previous release might be like the EVR Mark II. So it's got a lot of people wondering what's up. So let's go ahead and talk about what is Triton, who is it for, and should you buy it? So Triton is a four driver tribrid IEM. Uh, it's got two bone conduction drivers, a dynamic driver, and one balanced armature. You can probably start taking some guesses about Triton sound just after checking out that driver compliment. It's priced at $17.99, and Triton really kind of picks up where IEMs like Hero and Valkyrie from Empire Ear's previous generation left off. In terms of the technical specs, Triton's impedance is 2.8 ohms, and the sensitivity is 99 dB. So you might notice that's a very low impedance at under three ohms, uh, but also somewhat low sensitivity as a lot of IEMs have a sensitivity over 100 dB. And that's gonna play into how it reacts to a lot of different sources, uh, you know, with the low impedance, meaning it's very easy to power, but also the lower sensitivity, meaning that it's in other ways more difficult. And in general, I found it's very sensitive to whatever source that you're gonna plug it into. The standard package that you're gonna get with it includes all of your Empire Ears basics, uh, you know, that metal case, final e-tips, cleaning cloth, et cetera, and the IEMs themselves. If you manage to secure one of the limited edition launch packages, that also includes an additional leather case and an upgraded cable with like silver that's plated with gold that's then plated with palladium or something crazy like that uh, very interesting cable has you know great look and feel to it with a special trident logo on that cable as well in terms of the sound if you look at the graph you can see the bass is very much elevated in triton forming kind of a shelf that just kind of looms over the rest of the im almost like a wave threatening to smash the mids and treble uh, there's a little bit of a bump in the mid-range that's gonna give you more vocal presence or just a good balance of vocal presence at least. Uh, even if the vocals can feel a little pulled back uh, from behind that bass uh, and somewhat rolled off treble at the top. So in, in general, this is a bass head IEM and I wanna say it's a highly refined bass head IEM, but it's not, at least not in the way I think we've been using that idea recently. Where I. I think it's become the trend to really emphasize the sub bass, but generally, you know, keep those mids and treble in line with the mid bass. Uh, a lot of IEM tunings that, you know, the 64 audio of Allure comes to mind, which keeps the mid bass really well under control while strongly elevating that sub bass. Empire Ears has done this a bunch, like with the Legend Evo. It's another one uh, that kind of falls into that category. Triton basically says, nah, like our technical aspects of the mid and treble are really strong, but this one's all about the bass uh, in terms of the tuning balance. Uh, and it just really has that raw, powerful bass head sort of sound. So along with that big, raw, bassy sound, we're gonna get a good sense of width in the sound stage, uh, solid stereo image presentation with good general three dimensionality. I think the bone conduction, however they're using that, does give you that sense of space. I wouldn't expect the you know, more pinpoint imaging. Uh, if you're going back and forth, you know, in a similar price range, say the 64 Audio U12T, that's gonna give you more of that holographic separation and placement. Triton's just gonna give you a big, bold, wide sound. So with all that in mind, who is Triton for? Find that if you roll into a lot of audiophile forums, 
you know, a bass head tuning can be somewhat controversial. A lot of folks are really looking for accuracy above all else, detail and resolution, clarity, all of that are kind of the buzzwords. And if something has too much bass or what's perceived to be too much bass, it's, you know, oh, we could just go buy some beats and get it over with you know, that sort of thing. And you could certainly level that kind of accusation against Triton, but there's something here that's missing from that. I think that's the idea of the combination of bass quality and quantity. A lot of great, very well-balanced, well-tuned IEMs give you a lot of bass quality. Uh, you know, you can just really feel the textures and everything else in the bass, um, but it's never going to stand out against the rest of the mix particularly strongly. Triton gives you both, the quality and the quantity. The details that you can find in the bass in the presentation of the low end instruments are excellent. Impact is powerful and you get that deep, deep rumble. Uh, with songs that are utilizing those lower sub bass ranges. So you get all of that and it's just big. It's elevated, you can turn it up if you're sensitive to treble, if you're sensitive to sibilance and you run into this problem of, the, you know, you can turn up some IEM so much uh, but you're always bringing those mids and treble up with the bass. So by the time you're getting the punch you really want in the bass, you're kind of getting blown out by that treble upper mids, other things that can become fatiguing. Triton lets you do that without bringing up the treble with it, essentially. Again, I think the treble and mids are very well executed, but the balance in the tuning is shifted towards the bass. Earlier, I mentioned pairings, and that is gonna have some impact here uh, as a lower impedance on the IEM means that the output impedance of the device you plug it into is gonna have a bigger impact. So plugging it into a desktop amp is gonna tend to actually bring out some of that low end power even more, uh, but also in a lot of ways give you a bigger, cleaner sounding low end with that. A DAP that's more refined sounding like an Ibasso DX260, that's gonna clean things up a little bit and maybe tilt the balance back towards that more refined sort of set. With a warm source like the iFi Go Bar Kensei, it can get a little bit washed out in that low mid, mid bass range where it just becomes a little bit bloomy, a little over warm at times. Uh, so you gotta really find the balance with this one between getting that extra bit of power uh, that's gonna really bring out the fullness of the impact, but not pairing it with a source that's going to muddy up that mid bass and low mids, which are already pretty well emphasized here. And with that tuning, it's gonna play well with the genres you expect. Uh, you know, pop, uh, rock, you know, modern alternative to classic rock, Triton does amazing. Uh, you know, especially if that modern alternative electronic type realm that's gonna utilize that full range of the sub bass. And I remember that those vocals do get a little bit of a pot that does present a really strong, you know, emotional, present vocals along with that bass boost. Where I really felt that Triton Shine though was with classic rock. I think classic rock can be a tough genre to get right with IEMs uh, because one, there's the issue of the quality of the recordings, uh, some of the techniques that were used in the recording, a very highly detailed, very resolving IEM can reveal things, you know, like rather than using studio reverb, they were, you know, recording the drums in a big hall to get lots of echo. That doesn't come across as well on IEMs as it does on a two channel system or even on dynamic driver headphones. Triton is gonna give you that visceral feeling that you wanna get from that, that natural feeling that the producers were hoping to create uh, and that it's, and it's gonna translate well with Triton where it doesn't translate well with all IEMs. So it's probably not gonna be your top pick for classical type music, though it does play well with a lot of that Hans Zimmer range, modern soundtrack type music, but you know, probably wouldn't wanna be pulling up Bach and Vivaldi with Triton. So we've got a bass head IEM that's tuned really well to play nicely 
that full range of sort of modern genres uh, from rock, pop, you know, classic, alternative, metal. Triton does really well there. Uh, not as well with acoustic folk and that sort of thing where you're gonna find some boominess in the bass. And of course, classical. Again, you're not gonna get some of the details you're looking for at the top end. So with that in mind, should you buy Triton? A lot of the current wave of high-end IEMs to me are really about balancing the fun and the detail and accuracy. A 64 Audio Velour is one that comes across to me as really encapsulating that, where you have you know, that great treble, a little bit of extra sparkle, excellent detail, separation, and definition. And then you have that low bass shelf that just really kills it in the sub bass regions. And you can use the, you know, Apex filters to get a little bit more mid bass in there as well. Triton, I think, kind of comes opposed to an IEM like Velour and that it kind of just lets the bass have some fun. It gives you that greater elevation in the bass. And if you love that, if you've been, you know, really looking for a high-end bass head IEM, uh, Velour is gonna kill you with the treble. Uh, if you really, again, if you want the balance towards the bass, and a lot of those IEMs out there like Velour that have excellent bass, they do try to keep that upper end more present as well, where Triton is content to sort of balance the scales more down into the depths. And if you've been following Empire Ears for a while, you might think of the Legend X or the Legend Evo as IEMs that did something similar. To me, Triton plays a little bit better with the you know, hard rock, metal, classic rock, and even some pop uh, than Legend Evo did. I thought Legend Evo falls more into that category of trying to balance things out, emphasizing the deep sub bass to avoid emphasizing the mid bass and keep that more versatile balance that's gonna work across you know, the full range of genres that you could still listen to folk with it and classical without feeling like you're missing something or you've got too much low end or, or whatever else might be going on there. Uh, makes it maybe a little closer to the original Legend X, uh, but I think it's just more refined than Legend X. Uh, the mid-range, the vocals, uh, they've done a lot of work there to kind of give you exactly what you need without giving too much there that takes away from your enjoyment of that low end. So maybe you've already got, you know, your selection of very well balanced IEMs or highly accurate IEMs. You've got a, a Vision Ears VE10, or maybe you got an Empire Ears Odin or something like that. And you're saying, I just want something that's gonna slam and kick and shake my brains out. Triton is the option that you're looking for there. Or maybe you're sitting here saying, none of that sounds good to me. I do not want my brain shaken stirred, I don't want my head slammed, this all sounds terrible, then you probably shouldn't buy Triton. Uh, you're probably gonna end up disappointed. But if you're in that first camp, Triton really carries on Empire Ears legacy with IEMs like the Bravado, the Legend X and the Legend Evo in delivering a powerful bass head experience uh, that's still gonna let you appreciate the rest of the music. Thanks for watching. Uh, you can check out Triton and a lot of other great products at bloomaudio.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back soon with more high fidelity audio content.